Our scripture today comes from Mark chapter 4, starting with verse 35. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and he began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asleep. He asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Sea of Galilee is 150 feet deep in its deepest point. It's 680 feet below sea level at the shore. And even today, if you go near the Sea of Galilee and you park your car near the Sea of Galilee, there's signs posted saying warnings that you could have water go over your car because so quickly a storm can ca come upon it. There's mountains around it, and because it's so below sea level, when the storms hit, they hit fast and furious. And so if you park your car near the Sea of Galilee in certain parking lots, it's at your own risk. Because you may come back to a waterlogged car. It's that quick and that fast and that furious. And so there they are. They're getting on in the boat, and they're getting in the water. And the boats are not very big. I mean, they're, they're about, I have a, a flat bottom 14-foot uh, boat, and it's about like that. I mean, not much bigger than that. A little bigger, but not much. And I can't imagine getting, being out in a storm in that boat. There's just twice I've been out in that boat when the winds have come up, and I was in Lake Palestine, uh, and it's near Tyler, Texas, and, and I was, had gone a little farther than I probably should have in a small boat in a very big lake, but the fishing was really good. So, hey, you go where the fish are, right? So, you know, but I remember all of a sudden the waves got a little taller, and I was in the boat by myself, and I thought, I may need to start heading back. And I remember heading back, and literally the boat was pow, 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 as I'm going through the waves, and I'm thinking, this is really not a good idea. But, you know, I had to get to shore. And just sort of <laughs> prayer in my boat was not so much peace be still, but just get me to the shore, Lord. So, uh, you know, water is powerful, and it's, it's beautiful, too. But, you know, I'm always drawn to water, to lakes, to rivers, to oceans. There's something peaceful about it, but it's also something extremely powerful and scary. I mean, water, the currents, the, the riptides, the different things that can come into play, and all of a sudden, you totally lose control when you thought you had control. It's scary. It can be. And here things were calm, everything was peaceful, they get in the boat, it's nighttime, all is good. And all of a sudden, these waves start crashing in, and water starts filling in the boat. And just so you know, water filling in a boat is not a good thing. It's a very scary thing. And yet, here is Jesus. And I love how the Gospel of Mark tells the story. The detail he adds. Not only was Jesus in the boat, but Jesus was asleep in the boat with his head on a cushion. With his head on a pillow. Sound asleep. I mean, Jesus had been preaching. He had he'd been doing all, the, all his ministry stuff. He was hard at work all the time. And don't you know, when he got in that boat, he was physically tired. He was human. And he had the same tiredness that we do. So he's physically tired, and he laid his head on a pillow, 
sound asleep. You know that sleep when you've worked all day and you've worked really, really hard? And I mean, you know, you can barely move and you walk in the door and as soon as your head hits the pillow, you know that you know what I'm talking about, boom, you're out. You're so tired. And it doesn't matter who's yelling your name. It doesn't matter what what's happening. You don't even hear it because you're just, you're, man, you're in a deep sleep. I imagine that's where Jesus was. And the waves are crashing in and hitting. And it's scary. It's fearful. The disciples are getting worried. They're getting stressed out. And isn't that what happens with us? When storms of life come our way, don't we get fearful? Don't we get stressed out? Don't we get worried? We're used to not like, oh, let me just chill out here with my head on the pillow. We're like, ah! You know, or we're calling people, we're like, oh my gosh! And, you know, we sort of freak out, whether we freak out literally outwardly or we just freak out inside and just completely are overwhelmed with that storm that's going on. Inside of us and outside of us. That's where the disciples were. They weren't sure what was going to happen. And here Jesus is in the boat, and he's all like, peaced out. What's that about? I mean, don't you know, when you're stressed out, don't you want everybody else to be stressed out with you? You don't want everybody being calm. I mean, man, does he not know what's going on? And they wake him up. Jesus, don't you care about us? It's not, Jesus, can you help us? Jesus, can you, you know, fix things? Jesus, we trust you. We know you can take care of us. Don't you even care? I mean, they're like incensed that Jesus is like all peaced out, all calm. Have you ever felt like that? When your life seems to be falling apart and you're like, man, don't you even care? I know those moments when it feels like, not that it is, but it feels like God doesn't even care because you, you, maybe you're not hearing from God or maybe you're just not sensing God and all of your world is falling apart and you're like, where are you, Lord? Where are you? Don't you care? But Jesus did care. And as they woke him up, He said, peace, be still. And it was. It was. The water was still, silent. And I don't know if you've ever been out on a boat when the water is just crystal, I mean, just glass. It's so beautiful. And like there's no ripples, it's just and that's what I imagine in my head and my visual mind is that just that crystal glass that all of a sudden happened just from those words that Jesus spoke. And you would think that would have given the disciples peace, right? And then they're more freaked out because they're like, it says they're terrified because they're like, oh my gosh, who is this dude? That's Christy paraphrase. Who is this guy in, a, in the boat that even the storms listen to him? That nature actually listens to what he says, and they, it doesn't. Don't you know, they were, it was just dawning on that, boy, this is really God. Maybe they thought about Psalm 46, and where it says, where God says, peace, be still. I am God. Peace be still. I am God. Maybe they were thinking about that as they heard those words and those words echoed in their hearts and minds. Or maybe they were thinking about when Moses came up to the Red Sea and the army of Egypt was behind him and how God parted the Red Sea and they were able to walk through on dry ground. How God had power over all things. As Jesus said, peace, be still. They were just starting to really realize who Jesus really was. They had already decided to follow him. They were his disciples, the twelve. 
but they didn't really know what they totally signed up for when they started following. They still were learning each and every day of Jesus' ministry who Jesus was, what he was all about. And isn't that how we are? I mean, did you really know who God was when you signed up to follow God? I mean, I think we think we know, but the more we really grow in our relationship, the more we really realize just how incredibly overwhelming God is. Just how beyond our comprehension and our understanding. Just how deep His love is. How wide. How incredible His grace and mercy is. It's so beyond our human understanding. The disciples were just starting to get who Jesus was. When I was about eight or nine years old, I went on a canoe trip with my parents, and we were uh, doing rapids on the Guadalupe River. And I was set in the middle of the canoe, had a life jacket on. And if you've never gone down the rapids, I mean, what, or been in a canoe at all, regardless whether it's rapids or not, you don't want to do a lot of moving, okay? Because the, the canoe's going to tip. Well, I was nine years old, so... I'm in the canoe. We're starting to hit the rapids. I'm getting a little nervous. I think I moved a little more than I should have. About that time, the canoe tips and gets stuck between two rocks in a very rapid, rapidy, is that a word? Rapidy area. I'm going to make it a word today. A very rapidy area. Oh, I like that. Rapidy. It's a very rapidy area. It's my word. Rapidy area. And I was stuck on the, under the boat partly because. My hands were clenched onto the sides for dear life. I was so scared and fearful. I was stuck under the boat. There was a little bit of air pocket, but the, the water's hitting me. And I'm, I do have a life jacket on. But, and I'm feeling my, my daddy trying to pull me up, and he can't because I'm gripped. I'm not going to let go of that canoe. Finally... I'd like to say I just let go. I didn't. Finally, he pushed me further down where I had to let go. And I popped out on the other side. And because I had a life jacket on, I, I was able to float and someone grabbed me out of the water when it got a little calmer. It was a scary time. I mean, I'm a, I was a varsity swimmer in high school. I love water. But I got to tell you, still, there's something scary about being stuck underwater. There's something scary about that feeling that just still, even, even when I was a varsity swimmer, there was a little bit nerve-wracking about being underwater too long in my mind, even though I, you know, raced. I mean, but there was something about that, that fear when the storms hit you, whatever they are, whether it's really being caught under a boat or whether it's that storm of life that just surrounds you. It's scary. It's very scary. As I was talking to the junior high and in, in Sunday school time, uh, small group time, um, it really hit me as we were talking about one of the, we we talk about the same stuff y'all are talking about in here. And to make my life easy. So, um, and I said, you know, when's the time that you really had to, a storm of life and you really had to trust God? And they sort of looked at me with blank faces. And so I said, well, let me, okay, well, let me share one. They weren't talkative today. Usually they're very talkative. Uh, and I, it hit me, and I just realized, and I didn't share this with the 9 o'clock because I didn't, wasn't thinking about it. This time last year, for me, it was a storm of life. This time last year, I was at a different church. I wasn't here. And the church was a church started. It had been going on for six years. I'd been there for almost three. And it was in a, a difficult spot when I first got there, got brought on. And, but it was incredible ministry. There was a lot of great things that happened at that church. It was a really a blessing to me and my family. The last year, my husband 
who's also a pastor, got to come on board, and we got to pastor together, which is something we never thought we'd want to do, and we actually really enjoyed doing that last year. It was just a beautiful time uh, in our family, in our ministry. It was really great. And about February, we realized that we were going to have to to close the church. It just financially, there was a lot of things to overcome, and we just knew it wasn't going to happen. Um, I walked into a, there was just a lot of stuff. So it was sad. The church knew about it. There were all these things, and it was literally a storm of life because Dan and I, as Methodist ministers, were assured a job, so we knew we'd, ha- we'd have some place to go, but we knew we weren't going to be put together. We had no idea where we were going to be put. We could be somewhere in deep east Texas and nothing wrong with east Texas, but I really, uh, my son, my youngest son's a gymnast, and there's not a lot of boys' gymnastics in east Texas. So, I mean, there, was, there were these things that we really, you know, I'm just being honest. I, you know, there were these, these things, and we were concerned, and there were all these issues and struggles, and it was scary. It was a storm. It was a big, huge storm. And the waves were crashing in on us. And I knew that God had us. So did my husband. But it's scary. When you're in the midst of a storm, and I know this church was in the midst of a storm. Those of you that were here last year, I mean, there was a lot of storms going on around here too. The wind was blowing and the waters were crashing in. I mean, all of us understand what it means to be in the midst of a storm. It's scary. And it's so easy to get caught and to be fearful. And we can do a couple of different things. One, we can just get totally distraught and fearful and get stuck in that mode. Another thing we can do is we can just avoid it. And some people did. Some people left and just said, I I put my hands up. I don't want to deal with this. This is too difficult. This is too hard. This hurts too much. It's, you know, this is too, too much. And don't we want to do that sometimes in life when storms hit us? Don't we want to just go, okay, I can't do this. I'm done. But we can't. That's when as Christians we're called to persevere and trust. Jesus was saying, don't you trust me yet? Don't you get it? Don't you all get it? I am. Peace be still. I am the Father. I am he. And he are one. When you trust in me, I can provide peace and calmness in the midst of the storm. Now, the storm doesn't always go away. You know, in this story, which is a true story, you know, immediately the water's calm. Sometimes that happens. But sometimes we have to ride it out. But we have to trust in the midst of that. We have to trust that God is God and he is all-powerful and he is working out the details, especially when we have no clue how that's going to happen. I know for me it was so scary, especially mostly for my children. I wasn't sure what, what school systems they were going to be in and it's always hard to move. And, you know, as a parent you always feel, you know, um, the responsibility of that. And I remember part of me walking in the storm and part of me trusting God was just really praying for my children and praying for them to be in a place, wherever it was, where they quickly were able to put up roots and just feel okay. It was also very difficult for them. I was surprised how hard it was on them spiritually to be in the midst of a church closing because they loved that church. It was, it was a place where they really grew greatly with God. And so it was very hard on them. It's hard in the times and the storms of life. I remember as I was in that, under that canoe, and it's funny how you remember certain things in your childhood so vividly. I mean, I probably was only under there for probably 20 seconds, but it felt like four or five minutes. I mean, I remember just, just, I mean, my hands, my knuckles were white. I was grabbing so hard on that canoe, holding so firmly, knowing that if I let go, I was going to die. And I should have just immediately let go, but I didn't, even though I had a life preserver on. I had a flotation device. 
Just like all of us have a personal flotation device. We have a Savior, Jesus Christ. And it took my daddy. Now he was my earthly daddy. But this could work another way, couldn't it? It took my daddy pushing me farther under so that I would let go and come up on the other side. Sometimes our heavenly daddy has to push us under a little further so we will let go and trust him. Because he knows we will come up on the other side and pop up. We may not always know how it's going to happen. We may not always see all the details he's working out. But trust we must that he is God and he will do it. But so many times we act like we are practical atheists. Like, we really don't believe. What I mean by that is we really don't, we, we say we believe in God, but we really don't, our actions don't show that we really believe in God, in our practical life, that we really don't trust Him to really work out the details. We really don't trust Him to calm the storms of life. And He's just saying, let go. Stop holding on. Let go and trust me. I shared with the, the junior high with two of that two of the people in the junior high classroom were answers to my prayer. They all looked at me very crazily eyed, like what? The parsonage just happened to be on the same street as the Charbonnets, and my administrative assistant, Valencia, who she's like, uh what? You here talk to she has two children, I had two children, and immediately after moving in, they connected and began a friendship. A friendship that helped my kids to feel immediately accepted, and when you move in the summertime and you don't know anybody, that's really hard on a child. And all of a sudden, they had friends, immediate friends. It was answered to prayer. Now, did the Charbonnet children know at that time they were answered to prayer? They even know that they were answering my prayer request to God, that they were part of him bringing peace and stillness to my household? No way. See, so many times we don't even realize when God is using us to bring peace and stillness to other people's lives. I know there are many of you that brought peace and stillness to each other's lives last year, and you may not have even been aware of it. God uses us to bring the calmness in each other's lives. He uses us to work together as the body of Christ so that all of us together can persevere through the storms of life. There's something incredible about how God says, Peace, be still, and it happens. We don't always know how and why. We don't always see how we play a part and others play a part. But let me tell you, it happens. I have never, ever felt as quickly connected to a church and to an area as I do here. I mean, I feel like I've been here years. It's not even been a year yet. I feel so blessed that you all have brought calmness and peace to my life. Now, it's not always calm. But there's something incredible about the ride that we're all on. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, I thank you so much that you are the I am that says, peace, be still, and it happens. It may not happen automatically. The circumstances of life may still be there, but you give us peace and stillness with inside ourselves to trust you. Help us, Lord, to know that truly you are all-powerful in our lives. 
and you're always working out the details, if we will just wait and trust and know that you are God. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive the blessing today. You may be stuck under a canoe right now. Your hands are tightly around, holding on for dear life. Open your hands. Receive all that God has for you, knowing that he is there to receive you on the other side and to be with you. Go forth knowing that Jesus says, peace be still. In Jesus' name, amen.